Negotiations are fun. Um, negotiations can get very stressful. Uh, negotiations are always interesting. Speaking from experience, and I know a lot of y'all have experience doing negotiations as well. Uh, when you first are trying to get hired for a job, um, you have to negotiate what the compensation is going to be because the job has one thing that they say they want to pay you. You have something else that you may want to get paid uh, and then you two try to meet in the middle. Or if you're working at a job, then you could have something that you're getting paid and you could feel like, hey, you know what? I deserve more. I deserve to be paid this much. And the, the company could be like, well, uh, we'll see about that. And you enter that state of negotiations. And with Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens, it is no different. He's been working for these Baltimore Ravens for these past five years. And he obviously feels like he needs to be paid more. He should be paid more. And the time is ticking. I mean, really time's up for him to be paid more. Uh, and we'll see what happens with that in the very, very near future because um, they have some decisions to be made, both the Ravens and Lamar Jackson. But there are some people who feel like right now, while Lamar Jackson has been out, that him possibly sitting out even more, him being out even more, not even due to injury, but some people think he's out due to contract negotiations, uh, due to really trying to show the Ravens his worth. And we're going to get into that in a second. But first, I got to give a special shout out to the newest team. Keep it clean. Patron, my guy, William B. Appreciate you very much. And also got to give a shout out to the newest team, Keep It Clean channel members, uh, Big Reg and Wolfie Johnson. So thank you to the three of y'all for supporting the channel. Uh, just a little bit extra. Thank you a, a lot for that. Seriously. Um, I always appreciate Team Keep It Clean because y'all just y'all show love all the time in, in so many different ways. So a lot of love. I, I got to reciprocate that back to y'all. So thank you for doing that. Um, now, first question. In this episode, quick episode two, it came from my guy, BB. He said, is Lamar sitting out and waiting on Harbaugh to possibly drop these last three games to be dealt with accordingly? This regime has to end Ravens ruining a generational talent's career. Hashtag team keep it clean. Hashtag blank check. So um, is Lamar sitting out these games to to waiting on Harbaugh to possibly drop them um, so things could be dealt with accordingly? I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's the case because I think him coming back, like him every time he's out, like we should, we always get reminders of how valuable he is to the Baltimore Ravens when he's in. Uh, but then when he's out, you get an even bigger reminder. So I don't think it should take uh, these next three games um, of him being out for the Ravens to be like, oh, man, that guy Lamar Jackson, wow, he's, he's really valuable to our franchise. I, I don't I don't think it should take that. And as far as you're talking about for Harbaugh to possibly drop him and be dealt with accordingly. Now, depending on what you mean by dealt with accordingly, is Harbaugh going to get fired? No, no, um, he ain't going nowhere. We know that. Uh, and especially right now, uh, it, it, a lot depends on how these last three games go. But like we said before, it's going to take the Ravens more work to miss the playoffs than it would take for them to actually get in the playoffs. Um, the game last night, the, the, Jack, the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Jets, um, the Jets dropped that one. It was an ugly game. Uh, that helps the Ravens. Uh, so Ravens are already getting help. You know, Ravens, they don't normally get help around this time, but Ravens are getting help. Uh, so like I said, it's, it's going to take more work for them to miss than to make. Um, but Ravens are not in a position. Uh, well, yeah, they're not in a position to fire Harbaugh right now. Not at 9-5, not, not at the brink of the playoffs. It just, it wouldn't make sense if they did something like that right now. And we know it's not going to happen right now anyway. Um, so they got to see how this playoff goes. Uh, as long as they do get in, it is still a possibility that they don't, but most likely they're going to get in. Uh, but they got to see how it goes, uh, how things go when Ravens get to the playoffs, how players play, how coaches coach and whatnot. But, I mean, I think we all know Harbaugh's leech is longer than anybody's on this team, longer than any single body, any single player, any single other coach. Harbaugh has the longest leash on this team. Um, so I don't think Lamar sitting out these games. If, if, if he was sitting out, not even due to health, but if, if he was sitting out due to just trying to show the Ravens something, What's it going to show them that they don't already know? Well, what's it going to show them that hasn't already been proven? It, I feel like that it, it wouldn't even do anything. Um, it would just, I mean, these Ravens are who they are, uh, and they, are, they aren't who they aren't. Uh, you knew who you are with Lamar. You know what you are without Lamar. And it's two completely different teams. Um, so he obviously gives you the best chance to win right here right now now if you're talking about the way that the ravens move i don't think him sitting out would change anything either because 
he missed those last, what, four, five, six games last year, and then they went into this offseason, and nothing changed about the way that they move or operated the philosophy or anything like that. So what would him sitting out this season, the rest of this season, do to really change anything? Uh, and he said this regime has to end Ravens ruining a generational talent's career. Now that part, <laughs> I can't argue with that one. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Next question came from a team keep it clean patron uh, My guy Keon He said when will we find Andy Isabella That's the mystery question my friend y You would know better than any of us Lamar's contract negotiations Next question came from my guy Dewan. He said I appreciate Lamar and his inner circle Trying to negotiate his contract but with agents I think this will probably uh, have been done Hear me out Okay Ooh, I, I, I love these agent questions But anyway He said number one Yes Lamar has advisors And they're giving him advice But they're not at the table With Ravens Brass That's true They're not It's Lamar At the table With Ravens Brass So it's Lamar Speaking to the Ravens Directly So Lamar they can, While they can be Straight up with him Like hey This is it This is what we want to offer you da, 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 da. He can be straight up With them too Ain't no beating around the bush it, it, It's straightforward you got to be blunt about this thing. And I, me, I definitely appreciate that. Yeah, a middleman is cool or whatever. They, 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 they sort of soften the blow. They soften the blow both ways, though. With Lamar Jackson and him talking directly to EDC, Bashadi, and them, ain't no blows to be softened. Going both ways, whether it's to Lamar to them or them to Lamar. So you got to be straight up. Anyway, number two. With an agent, he represents Lamar and serves as a buffer between Lamar and the Ravens front office. The agent is paid to basically break down why Lamar deserves what he wants and does the dirty work, which gives Lamar time to focus on football. With Lamar doing things himself, I, I, I get what you're saying, too. Uh, Lamar could be like, hey, I'm going to take care of football. You take care of the contract stuff. And that's cool. That's great. And it, that works for anybody who it works for. But with Lamar doing things himself, he can still do both. He, he can focus on football, as he said he was. Because remember... Hey, uh, we're going to try to get a contract done by week one. If we not doing it by week one, then I'm focusing on football, not focusing on a contract. And here we are. We're a week, what, 15, 16, whatever week we in. And the contract obviously hadn't been done. So he said, oh, we'll, we'll talk about it next offseason. And that's it. That's it. So that allows him to focus on football. Then once the offseason hits, then he can talk contract again. He can resume the talks. So it's, yeah, I, that's part two. Anyway, number three, an agent can be aggressive. And during negotiations, it could be a lot of emotions involved due to the fact that the NFL is a business and the team wants to pay you as less as possible. That's true. Even though you might think you are worth more with Lamar and his mom, I guess, talking to the Ravens front office, if they might get offended if, if they lowball him or downplay his value. They are well aware of all of that because everything you're saying is true. The Ravens are going to try to pay him as low as possible. He is going to try to get as much as possible. And this is where with negotiations, you're going to have to find some wiggle room. If this is if if you are going to remain with this team, if you're going to come to come to an agreement, usually there's some wiggle room on both sides. One team might have to pay up more. Somebody might have to take up a little bit less. He might get more. They might, you just never know. Um, but that's part of negotiations. Now, you, you mentioned and I've heard other people mention this, too. About the emotional part. He said uh, Lamar and his mom, they, they may get offended if Lamar, uh, if, if the Ravens offer Lamar, if they sort of try to lowball him or something. Okay. But the Ravens could also, they could get offended. Like, we can't just act like Lamar Jackson and his mom and his people are the only humans that are involved in these contract negotiations. Eric Acosta is a human too. He ain't no robot. Steve Bashotti is a human as well. He ain't no robot. A lot of people make it seem like Lamar Jackson and his mom and his people, like they will be negotiating with like robots or something. And, and that's it. No, no. You, you, it's real people on both sides of this thing. So real emotions could come from both sides of this thing, not just from Lamar's side, but from the Ravens' side as well. Now, while the Ravens obviously have much more experience in the negotiating field, that does not take out. That emotions are certainly involved, especially with Ravens being such a family-oriented organization. And that, that's a great thing, but it can also 
backfired too because if you so family oriented that's beautiful i love that and i appreciate it and i respect it but at the same time that can make it harder to make the hard decisions that you should really be making but we could talk about that another time but anyway uh number four he said I, yeah i understand you might save a couple meal by negotiating your own contract but this is a huge contract and think uh, and, and I would think maybe uh, to get an agent for my first big contract. Think about this. Um, who was Lamar's agent when he signed his NFL deal? Who was running the show? Who told him not to even run the 40? Because teams wouldn't respect him as a quarterback. Who was that? Who has been with Lamar Jackson every step of the way? Throughout his entire career, not just professional, not just collegiate, not just high school, but every step of the, who has been there? It's been his mom. And has she led him down the wrong path yet? Has she had him make some bad decisions yet? No, she hasn't. So why would he be like, all right, mom, thank you for everything. You done got me here. You done been so important, so valuable, so crucial up to this point in my life especially as my agent or you've been holding it down mom thank you so much but now uh i'm gonna go in a different direction what would that be it just it wouldn't make sense she hasn't blundered anything she hasn't messed up anything thus far so wh why would he change oh you know what let me get an agent now and i know some people be like well the agents they got all the experience well how is she gonna get experience how, 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 how is she going to gain that experience? It's, it's like with a job, like jobs when you go to interview. So um, you have any experience in this department? You have any experience in this area of work? And you're like, no, but I'm trying. Oh, OK, well, thank you for coming in. We appreciate you. And it's like, how do you expect me to get experience in this field if you're not going to give me experience in this field? And with, with, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that she's learning on the go. And I'm sure they got, like you mentioned, advisors and whatnot that are showing them stuff along the way. Um, but so he has no reason to be like, oh, you know what? After everything you've done for me, mom, you know what? I'm going to just, I'm going to go get an agent. And not even just on a personal level, but even on a professional level. Because again, she has not steered him in the wrong direction thus far. Why would she do it now? Since this is worth a lot of money. And I'm saying it's a lot of money. This, this deal could break records. This could be the biggest deal ever, ever, ever. But I'm sure they got plenty of people around that are helping them out and they're learning plenty along the way. And, and this could like break down so many doors and open so many doors for them, not only now, but for the future. What if she wants to start up her own agency in the future? What if he wants to start up his own agency in the future? They're learning so much now with this whole negotiation process and everything that they're going to have so much information. They're going to be able to retain so much information from this thing where it could set them up now and really just forever. Oh, Bashiri, <laughs> hold up there, buddy. He said, choose one. If you had to choose, who would you fire? EDC, Hobbs, or Giro, and why? Whoa there, buddy. Whoa. Well, first, I will wait till the end of this season. Uh, the end of the playoffs, the end of wherever Ravens season ends. Um, for me, if I had to choose one, uh, it would probably be the one in the middle. Uh, that would be Hobbs. The reason I would say it would be Hobbs is because Eric DeCosta, as a GM, he follows Hobbs' lead when it comes to roster construction and Hobbs' philosophy. Uh, Giro would be part of Hobbs, so Giro, he would end up going if Hobbs ended up going too. Uh, and then I would just I would start a new philosophy with a new coach. But again, you said, who would I choose if I had to choose? I didn't say I would necessarily choose that, but... Y'all know I would, I'm all for new philosophy, though. And the last question on this episode, and he literally like just sent this like just now as I'm recording this. But this is the last question on this episode, and then I will see you all for the uh, Falcons and Ravens game tomorrow uh, at 1 p.m. Or maybe I put this out on Saturday morning, but probably Friday afternoon. Anyway, he said, hey, how you doing? My name is Will, and I've been a lifelong Ravens fan, born and raised in Baltimore. And I'm going to say this. I think... It's really wrong how the Ravens are treating Lamar. He's a special talent, and we need him as a quarterback more than the front office knows. They need to pay that man, but if they don't, I would not blame Lamar for leaving the Baltimore Ravens because business is business, and if their front office can't see what they got in Lamar, then something is wrong with them. Huntley is a good quarterback, but he is no Lamar Jackson, and it shows. That's all I have to say for now. 
Peace and blessings to you, my brother. Go Ravens. Shout out to Will, man. Appreciate you, Will. And you're right. You're right. Lamar is Lamar. And Ravens, they got to wake up and smell the Lamar coffee. That's cringy as that sound. I, I'm, I'm, I don't need to ever say that again. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> they got to get it right, man. They got to get it right. But it just seemed like so many different signs are pointing to Lamar's last ride with the team. Yeah, this feels like a dream.